Yeah, well, I've been drawing as long as I can remember. I've been painting professionally for probably about 20 years now. Uh, so I come from a background of design and illustration. So I've done a lot of book illustration, magazines, and storybooks and that kind of thing. So I bring that influence to my work, including more of a comic book style to it. And so, you know, I incorporate those elements with the Cherokee history and heritage and language. Siona God, Kani Kolaha Dagwadoa. My name is Roy Boney Jr. I'm a Cherokee artist and I work for the Cherokee Nation Language Program. I have the privilege of working with a lot of Cherokee elders uh, every day in the language department. And a big part of that is hearing stories and hearing language and things like that. And I grew up with that too in my family. So as a kid growing up, I didn't see a lot of art that reflected like my experience and the stories I heard. So I wanted, as an artist, my goal was to tell those stories through, through the art and through a way that interests me. And so that's where the, these, this illustration style kind of comes into it uh, from comics and animation and that kind of thing. So my piece, Her Name is Wild Rose, won the grand prize at this year's Chill It's Years art show. I could talk about the, the title of the piece is in Cherokee. Uh, it's Du Doa Gistu Uni Gist, which means literally, uh, her name is, it's, it's saying, that's what the rabbits eat, because that's what the name is for Wild Rose. And the idea behind it uh, <clears throat> deals with the Cherokee Female Seminary. Uh, the, the students there were called the Rosebuds. You know, they had a, a newsletter they would publish called the Wreath of the Rosebuds, or sometimes it's called a Cherokee Rosebud. Uh, and so I was kind of fascinated by this history of them. They would print these newsletters in Cherokee, uh, and it was about just the daily goings on of uh, at seminary life. And sometimes there's poetry in it, and there's original artwork and things in those uh, old newsletters. And I like this idea of them calling themselves the Rosebuds. So that's why this piece is called Her Name is Wild Rose. But it ties into another part of the history too. Uh, you know, the seminaries were uh, places of, you know, education and more of Western style education. Too. Well, there's documentation that there was this uh, student that went to the seminary. Uh, she was a full blood Cherokee girl, but she didn't really like being there. She was always running away from the seminary to go back home. Uh, but they would catch her and they'd bring her back. And so this piece is inspired by that story. So I, would, I imagine who she might be. Uh, there's no documentation of who she was or anything about her. This is just, just coming from my imagination. And so I imagine this, this girl, you know, she's probably very traditional. And that's why she had that conflict there. She didn't like being there so much. Uh, she missed home. So I imagine that combined with the story of the deer woman as being a very traditional, you know, figure in a lot of our stories and so I was like well at one point dear woman was probably dear girl or dear you know teenage girl you know so this is her in her younger phase and maybe it could have been her I don't know that's kind of the, the concept behind this piece. I grew up hearing stories about dear woman quite a lot and it was often in relation to like kind of trying to make children behave or people kind of be act in a good manner a lot of times, you know, she's kind of portrayed as kind of scary, and sometimes you know, she'll get, she'll go after men or something, you know, I'd take them out into the woods and whatever, but uh, I, you know, in a lot of Cherokee stories, uh, there's always the good and bad part of things, so it's always about this balance. So when I portray her, I like to show her too in a, a different light where she's not so scary sometimes. So again, showing her as maybe as a younger lady, what she may have been like. Most of my pieces are mixed media, mostly watercolor, but I use, incorporate uh, pencil and ink and some acrylic too. So when you look at the close-up on it, you'll notice quite a lot of marks in it. Uh, uh, one feature of my style I've kind of developed over the last several years is getting really loose and kind of brushy with it, uh, kind of splattery, so it's not super uh, smooth and refined. So I like showing that process so you can see some of the mark making in the actual painting. Well, it was a, a shock to hear that I won the grand prize. Uh, I've been enter entering this particular show since 2006, I believe. I've never missed a year. Uh, the first year I entered, I actually won grand prize then. So it was kind of nice to, to win it again after so many years, you know. And so uh, you never know how your piece is going to do in these shows. You know, the judges are always different. And so when you're working on a piece, obviously you try to do your best or do your know, 
you put your best foot forward, but you never know how it's going to go. So I'm very grateful to, to win the grand prize, and it was just, you know, again, quite a shock. And I really like the uh, Troy Jackson uh, trophy that was designed for that. I'm a big fan of his work, so I was very pleased to receive that as well. Well, the Trailblazers Art Show is one of the longest running Native American art shows in the state. Uh, and it's open to all you know, federally recognized tribes, and it's a good showcase for uh, Native art. And so it's, it's a, a huge honor to be just a small part of that and see my work alongside some of that work.